everybody, welcome back to the channel again. Nice to see you. Some more jobs in the fish room today. So let's go in and have a look. So ignore this horribly dirty tank. Um, I'm getting rid of this tank altogether, so I'm just cleaning it out. Been taking out uprooting plants and things like that. But today's job is this tank here. We're going to drill it. So as you can see with the rest of the tanks in the fish room, they've all got these overflows, which are like little bulkheads overflow into a pipe, into a drain, which then goes and drains away, as you would imagine. This is a fairly new tank, so I haven't done this one yet, so I'm going to get started with this one. So I've laid out what I need. These are the bits and bobs. We've got the overflow itself, so this is, um, it's called a tank connector, it's from B&Q. Um, you can buy proper ones on Amazon and things like that, but this is going to be just fine for me. This is the bit that goes inside the tank. And the reason I use this is because I can use it to set the water level. So if you imagine this is where the hole is in the tank. In fact, let's go ahead and show you. So here, for instance, this is still filling up. But as you can see, the more I tilt that up or down, it kind of sets where the water level can be. So it gives me a bit of leeway um, if I want to put something on the top or keep the level at a certain level for whatever reason. It lets me do that. So I'm going to use this one. We're going to go on this side of the tank. That'll be on the inside and then I can set that there and everything should be okay with that. So I've used this plastic bit on the end. It's basically a rubber elbow and it's just kind of jammed into there. I wish I could tell you where I got it from, but I've got no idea. I just keep a box full of spare bits and bobs. And um, this is quite good because it's slightly bigger than the opening there. So it gives me a very flush fitting and then I can fit it into this pipe here as well which will then go into the drain. Other things here, the crucial bits, obviously you need a drill with some variable speed um, because the idea is you go slow. You need, um, obviously, this is for cutting the hole. This is your glass uh, hole cutter. So it's a diamond tipped um, grinding hole cutter. Again, B&Q or any other DIY shop should sort you out with that. Um, this is the crucial bit. So this is just a, an off cut of plastic that I've had and kept for a while. But you could use anything, an old bit of wood or... Uh, I've even used chopping boards in the past where I've kept the hole. But this is something that gets... And you put a hole in it to the same size as the glass bit. And it is, use it as a guide basically so that it doesn't slip around and mark all the glass. And some good old duct tape, gaffer tape. Hold that in place on the tank and we should be good to go. The other thing I need is a squishy bottle because I need to keep it lubricated with some water. Um, so we'll get it all set up and I'll show you how to drill the tank. So it isn't necessarily something you need to be scared of. As long as you do it carefully and slowly, um, you shouldn't have too many problems. And it's definitely a DIY thing. Um, I've done, I know this because I know where my limits are because I've broken many a tank, but I've had far more successes. Um, the only thing you really need to know is whether or not the glass you've got is hardened or tempered um, because that will cause problems and I, I wouldn't advise drilling that glass and I don't really know a good way to tell other than researching wherever you got the tank from. I'm going to choose an area on the glass. You don't want to go too close to the edge but also you don't want to really go in the middle of the glass either because that just makes it look bad. Um, so I'm going to go for the corner on this side because this is furthest away and like I say I'm <laughs> I don't know of a way to tell whether glass is tempered just by looking at it, but if you do, let me know in the comments. Uh, and I found the best way, just to be sure, is to make sure you ask the tank manufacturer. Or look up the specs online. So I'm fairly confident that that's going to be a good position. And um, I've measured this, what that looks like compared to the rest of my tanks. And I'm kind of happy with that. That'll let me angle it up and that will maybe set the water level around here, possibly. So I'll just finish taping this up. And the, I use this, I don't know where I got it from, it's just it's it sits off the glass a little bit. And then because I tape it under here, when I drill there, any glass shards that fall down will get stuck to the tape as well. So it kind of keeps it a little bit um, happier. I'm going to tape it on the inside as well, on the other side. To do exactly the same thing so I don't have to worry about glass shards in the aquarium. I've done it without doing this many times before so you don't really need to do that but I just do this with some tape underneath roughly where the hole's going to go 
and then that catches any of the dust that will fall. There's no livestock in the tank at the moment, it's just, it's got water in it, but there's nothing in it. I've moved all the fish out just in case I crack it. Hopefully that's not foreshadowing anything. So I've got my drill, like I say, a variable speed drill is best. This one in particular, it's got a screw function, so it goes a bit slower. And then I can also control the speed with my pressure on the trigger. Squishy bottle to keep it well lubricated. So drilling slowly all the time, doing this. It will take a good few minutes. If you're doing this right, it'll take quite a while. Don't rush it, because when you rush it, that's when you get problems. So it's basically just keep the constant pressure Keep it still, don't push really hard, um, just enough to let it grind away. And I'm kind of going to go at, start it off at that kind of speed, and I'm just going to keep it going. I don't know if you can see that there. And as I get going and a bit more confident, I might go up to that kind of speed. But I'm really leaving it that. Um, another thing to make sure is don't, as I have done once and broken a tank, don't have your hammer setting on if you have a hammer drill because that's that's going to end in tears anyway let's go on with it so literally slot it through the hole and then as you can see here this is a, a, like a guide it helps me that horrible sound is what you want to hear And every now and again, squishing with water. So after about a minute of drilling, this is what we've got. As you can see, there's maybe a couple of millimetres of groove there. And um, I've obviously been putting a little bit more pressure on the left hand side than the right hand side, so I need to make sure I take care of that. But otherwise going well if you do stop in the middle make sure when you go back in you get into that same groove so you don't want to cause scratches everywhere and away we go there we go that took about five minutes and um, like i say just keep it steady don't really force it or anything like that you should be absolutely fine or, my biggest tip is don't be tempted to admire your handiwork and run your finger around that because it will still be razor sharp around there as I have found to my detriment but yep I'm happy with that nice hole no, nothing inside the tank because I had my gaffer tape underneath it nice and clean no major chips so happy with that next step is installing the overflow or the tank connector they usually come with a little gasket rubber gasket thing that goes on the inside on the water side it's just as simple as that. You put it in and screw it up. You don't really want anything more than hand tight because uh, you don't need anything more than hand tight and you risk cracking the glass if you do. That in effect is it installed. And then you get your rubber elbow with your hose into your pre-drilled drain location and you're good to go. And there the finished article. So as you can see, all my tanks up here have these overflows. They go into this piping here, which I've strapped to the racking. Goes all the way down. And this meets up with the new one here. And that flows round and away into the drain. So, one tank added. When I get my new tank here, I'll do exactly the same thing with that. But people do keep asking me how I do my overflows. So I thought I'll do a video, show everyone. And hopefully that makes a bit of sense. I've used my little fill line. As you can see, that's pouring out at quite the rate. Um, it's overflowing in there, perfectly dry, no leaks. Everything's happy. Um, so job well done. What I want to do is, I'm gonna actually gonna use this as my muck guppy tank. So it's gonna house muck guppies and cherry shrimp. So I'm gonna get some sand, a dusting of sand along the bottom. Um, but the water's a bit cold because I've basically just filled it up with cold water. So I'll let it heat up, put in some sand, maybe have a couple of plants and bits of wood, things like that. So as I can give the, the cherry shrimp somewhere to hide and breed, as well as the baby guppies. And then we should be good to go. But I'll show you that in a second. If you like this sort of thing, and this is your first time here, if you click that subscribe button, that would really help me out. Um, it doesn't cost anything. Completely free. I'll wait. Thank you. 
Oh, I think we're just about done. The water's a bit cloudy because I've just been putting the sand in and moving things around. Um, I've just put in a few of the guppies from my muck guppy tank. I'll let you have a look. So what I've done is just give it a dusting of sand on the bottom. I've chucked in a load of cherry shrimp, a couple of plants, uh, and a couple of my nicer guppies. Not that you can see them. Yeah, these are some of the some of the nicer mutts with the nicer patterns. But yeah, I'll just keep this going with a colony of them. But it'll hopefully it'll be a nice little tank that'll have a few beauties in it over time. So we've got the drip tip there, filling it up. Tank done. This is my muck guppy tank where I'm filling it up from. There's some shrimp in there as well. So that will free up this tank for something else. Um, and probably all these three tanks too. I'll be able to do a few more different projects with some different species. Uh, and they'll all be in this nice big tank, hopefully breeding and doing their stuff. So that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. If that was of any use to you whatsoever, please click that like button, click that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.